Alilianchi y Mainalian Kakushanki, Nyoka Sutimi Sisa Kispe, Quechua Ay Maracani. I'm so grateful to be here with you tonight. I cannot start this talk by first acknowledging that we are in unsurrendered, occupied territory of my cousins, the Lenape Hokin people. You might be wondering, who are the Quechua, who are the Aymara, who am I? You see me right here wearing my pollera with so much pride and speaking my indigenous language, Quechua. But it hasn't always been like that. Growing up in Peru, I was told that I was mestiza. I didn't see myself as indigenous. For people who are not familiar with this term, mestiza means to be of mixed heritage, specifically between Spaniard colonizers and indigenous people. And it is a term that comes all the way from the caste system imposed during colonization as a way to uphold white supremacy, meaning it was seen as better than being indigenous, but not as good as being Spaniard or European. It has been hundreds of years, and somehow this term is still being used in society as a way to identify ourselves. All I knew about my ancestry was that my family, like many others, took great pride in our great-great-grandfather, who was Spaniard. I also knew I had a great-grandmother who was black. We didn't talk about that. And of course, I had some Inca ancestors, but they're extinct, so I was just mestiza. The experiences I had, what I heard, what I saw, everything pointed out that I was mestiza and I believed it until I came to New York, the most diverse city in the world, where people didn't see a mestiza. In fact, I will often get confused as Mexican, Ecuadorian, Amazonian, Native American. Ha, huh. that rang a bell on me. I started questioning who I was, and I had this identity crisis. I think many of us have been there. And I needed to know who I really was for myself. Educating myself about mestizaje led me to learn about blood quantum, which is a way to measure how Indian you are, and was created as a mechanism for cultural genocide. And the more I learn, the more I realized that I was, in fact, a detribalized indigenous woman. Colonialism took away our lands, our religion, our customs. There is a reason I didn't know I was indigenous. There is a reason I didn't know my native language. There is a reason I didn't know I was Quechua and Aymara. My grandparents spoke our native languages. Later in life, they had to learn Spanish, but because of systematic racism and discrimination, they didn't pass it on. Only 200 years ago, indigenous languages were spoken in its majority in countries like Mexico. By now, indigenous languages are in danger all around the globe. So I decided to learn my indigenous language. I started to take in classes, immerse myself in my culture, travel to the Andes, and started learning my history told by my people. From this beautiful journey of discovery, I have learned that you can't love what you don't know. I remember thinking at some point in my life in changing my indigenous last name, Quispe, because I was taught that it was too indigenous and people would look down on me. 
it wasn't until a year ago that I found out that Kispe is Quechua, and it means the crystalline and brilliant waters from our apus, our glaciers. I fell in love. The moment I started this journey of learning my history and listening to my heart was the moment I started to love myself. I felt confident in my skin. I started appreciating my features. But most importantly, I knew who I was. I adopted the name Quechua Sisa as a way to reclaim my identity. I also started sharing my journey on social media, and surprisingly, people felt connected with it. I came to realize that we all have been listening to a narrative about indigenous people told by one side of history, which inspired me to create an Instagram series called Native Voices where I started to have in live conversations with indigenous people from different nations, like Mapuches from the south, Quechua from the Andes, Diné, Navajo from the north, in order to learn more about us. What a better way to learn about indigenous people than by us teaching them. As an artist and as a storyteller, Reconnecting to my indigenous heritage gave me a greater mission. I recognized that a reason I didn't see myself as indigenous for most of my life was because I believed in the stereotypes I saw on TV, in film, in the media. Having no image has a detrimental impact. Having a negative image has a detrimental impact and even having a false positive image, then people have superiority complexes. Film is such a powerful medium. Representation is important. It is a way to teach and to educate. So I have made it a point in my art to tell stories that break stereotypes, stories that not only serve and honor reality, but also inspire us to do better. As such, I'm currently producing the second season of Vive el Quechua, a YouTube channel by Quechuas that teaches our culture through our language. So that every people has their own unique story. It is important to understand that we all have been affected by colonialism. No matter where you're from, there is a history of colonization, and it carries lots of trauma. No matter if you were colonized or settler. Our society is still in the process of ridding itself of white supremacy and patriarchy. Let's remember, in the US, segregation was legal until 1950s. Women gained the right to vote only 70 years ago, and Native Americans were in the right to vote in every state until 1962. The last residential Indian school didn't close until 1997. These are realities that our grandparents, parents, and even we have lived through. And we are still living through the consequences of colonialism. That mindset has been normalized. It has not only affected how we perceive ourselves, but also how we interact with each other. It affected me. Growing up, I believe that I was less. Because, of, because I was taught that my features, my skin color, my last name, my indigeneity were not beautiful. This beauty standard left no room to appreciate the beauty of diversity. So as a teenager, I considered 
having a nose job. I avoided the sun. I tried to distance myself from my indigeneity. And I thought that no matter what I would do, I would never be enough. But peeling away the layers of my colonized mind, I uh, came to realize how valuable indigenous ways of viewing the world are. For example, in Quechua language, there is only one pronoun for women and men. Bye. This tells us so much about the mindset of gender roles. What does it mean to be a woman or a man? Both have an important role in our communities. Women were also warriors, and they will also work in the field, just like men. And Pai is not only the pronoun of people, but also other animals. We don't have an exploited relationship with animals or extracted relationship with the earth. Our diet is mostly vegetarian, respecting the cycles of life. Indigenous people make up less than 5% of the total human population and support about 80% of the global biodiversity. When learning Quechua, I found out that there is no word for nature. In fact, we consider ourselves nature, and Earth is our mother, Pachamama, whom we treat with love and respect. Another aspect that struck me the most is that there is no word for friends or friendship. In Quechua, we call each other brother and sister because we believe we are a family, which gives us a sense of reciprocity. Just think how much those mindsets could change our life. They certainly changed mine. After learning this, I remember seeing a homeless person in the subway and just thinking, how did we fail this person as a society for him to end up there? There is a history. There is a cause. There is a system behind that. Just like mass incarceration, mass immigration, missing and murder, indigenous women, addictions, poverty, hunger, climate change, broken treaties, detention center, slave labor, and the list con continues. Colonization carries trauma and affects all of us, meaning there is no group of people in a position to save others because we all have been affected by it. It is important to look straight in the eyes at this painful, uncomfortable, but important history. We need to have the courage to learn and be accountable. Our global society has been influenced by these colonized minds for centuries. Knowing and accepting where and who you are can prepare us to move forward on a path of collective healing. The reality we live in is the result of how we perceive ourselves collectively and how we interact with each other. So I'm here to remind you all that our history, your story, didn't begin with colonization. Indigenous is a global term, and we all have indigenous roots to somewhere. I challenge you to rethink who you are through a decolonizing lens. Breaking the stereotypes that society places upon who we are are important in order to shape our future and enrich our lives. 
I can assure you that the greatest gift you can give to yourself is knowing where you come from. At the end, we are all interconnected. We are brothers and sisters, one with Pachamama, our mother. Urbiliachai, Songkolachai, Turekuna, Nyanyaikuna. Thank you. <laughs>